Now, in your head, before you go any further, yeah. in your head, your wife just called the cops on you for something that you don't see. You never touched her. You were correct. You never touched her. There was correct. no physical anything. She calls the cops. Now, in your mind, especially, try to think back to that night mm -hmm. or day, whatever it was. Are you done with her? This is going to hurt. Gonna hurt. It's time, it's time for the Suffering, for the suffering Podcast. 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 Yeah. What the hell? You 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 lost once, and then you rolled the dice again. Yeah. What the hell? You're supposed to be a smart guy. Yeah, well, uh, contrary to that, I guess uh, I was struck by Cupid's arrow. Yeah. Oh, uh, boy. My, my, uh, my uh, second wife was involved in EMS, and this is- Understood the, the schedule. And and this is not your uh, Lady in the Tramp sort of rolling the meatball over in the Disney movie with the, the piece of spaghetti. Uh, we met over a sick prisoner. <laughs> okay. I was going to say on like a DOA or something. <laughs> yeah, very close. Very close. And um, she was uh, she was beautiful. She stole my heart uh, initially. And the more we got to know each other, um, it, it just carried forward. She had a great sense of the job, knowing it, the rigors, life, death, um, death scenes suicides and i've had i've had a bunch shifts. of shifts i've had a bunch of critical incidents um and then uh we got married and a year later we had our first child uh grace and then um a year later faith erin came into the world so you got grace and faith and rose and rose i have Jeez. grace grace marie flynn well rose is the carryover from your irish days rose yeah. ireland flynn oh my <laughs> dear lord she, she sneezes and clover comes out. <laughs> I was going to say, I was just going to say, you, you must shit clover leaves or something. Yeah. Yeah. So how long, you, you obviously fell into this family role. You had kids very quick. Were they Irish twins? No, no. But no? that's a great term. I, I, I wasn't even familiar with it until somebody told me about it. Oh, really? It. They, they were in a year apart. Yeah, a little more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and, you know, for the record, as if uh, anyone wants to criticize me as a husband, I would say my batting average for getting the baby was very high. <laughs> oh, you just got to lift the legs up. One, one shot, one try, and, and the, 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 Flynn, the Flynn guy <laughs> put the baby in there. <laughs> so, so you got laid three times in your marriage and you had kids three times. That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> now, being... being... A-Rod a wish he had a batting average like Tom Flynn. <laughs> Did you ever want to try to go for the fourth and try to get your boy? Because every man wants their boy. I, you know, it's not that you love your daughters any less. Yeah. The only thing I really wanted is out of selfishness, I want the Flynn name to carry on. You know, I, Irish, Irishmen just have a deep rooted tradition in sort of carrying it on. But I will tell you something. My color palette is pink and purple. Yeah. If I had a boy, I would stare at him like a Rubik's Cube. I was like, I don't know, cuz. I don't know what to do. All <laughs> See, I'm, the, girls. I'm the absolute reverse. Yeah. I'm the, but again, you know, you, you just said something that hit home to me. So, you know, I'm Kevin Patrick. My son's Patrick Kevin. My youngest one is James Alexander the Fifth, so they're 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 legacies. I'm, and I, a, I'm a junior, and and I tell them too. I said this is this is something that nobody else can take away from you. This belongs to you. Yeah. You make it what you want to make it, and uh, hopefully they do. But you know, they're, See, they're I, I always said I had a boy and a girl. It's like M and M's. One went nuts, one went out, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. My 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 barber used to say something. It's you know Italian barber and, and nut legals. Tom, you're a buttonhole maker. You're a buttonhole maker. You don't know how to put the stem on the apple. <laughs> say, All right, yeah, you're correct, but I couldn't be happier. And so, as you see, I wear this on my on my neck. Yeah, this is absolutely this this it, it's uh, it's a dog tag, and um, it's on my it's on my social media, and I can read it verbatim. I don't even have to look at it, and it says three little girls stole my heart. They call me daddy, and it's got my daughter's name on it: Grace, Faith, and Rose. And I'm a soldier in, in a battle right now, but, yeah. but I'm, I'm, I'm for them. Well, when did your marriage start falling apart? There was, um, oddly enough, you know, the, the, the other, there's two sides of the story, right? Sure. So I'm only telling you my viewpoint. There's, um, there's three sides to every story. Yeah. yeah. That side, this side, and the truth. Yeah. And, and I can tell you as a husband, um, when I became a father, um, I, I definitely became less attentive to my wife. Um. They really, I mean, it's almost, it's almost the same thing when I became a cop. When I became a father, I'm telling you, man. Because your responsibility level just hit the roof. You, you're responsible for these three human lives to make sure that they move forward in life. 
and I'm an only child. Yeah. And now they have siblings. And uh, I'm also a, a product of divorce. So my parents were divorced when I was five years old. Um, but I had these daughters and I said, no way, man. I am a family man. You are never going to see the side of divorce. And then God's plan kicked in. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, so how far were you into your career when your marriage started heading down a bad way? My, um, my wife's father came down with an illness. Uh, so my father-in-law, they're Italian. And uh, it was a mystery at first. And, and I, I really do, uh, with all my heart, I love this man. And it was a liver illness. And uh, at one point, I told my wife, I said, out of your family members, I said, I'm a match for your father. I'll donate my liver to him because I can go out on uh, family leave and we won't lose money. Now you insert joke here. Is an Irishman <laughs> donating his liver like giving a lemon, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, at the time I'm 50, but this liver is like an 89-year-old woman's. <laughs> so it's like it's as you could say it's a hollow offer, an Irishman offering his liver. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But okay. I was, I God is my witness. I was willing to do it. Um, it never came to fruition, and within like six months, uh, he passed, and she had a a marked change in personality. It mm -hmm. was just like a light switch went off. Believe me, I know. Yeah. You know, I've seen that. I've seen that a couple times. I worked with a guy and loved his wife. You know, they were a good couple. You don't know what happened behind closed doors. Yeah. But her father dies. Same thing. She goes off the rails. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Happens all too often. And, and you know, to what degree it played a, a, a part in, in my circumstance, I feel it did. Um, and then... And then the incident. The happened. incident. So walk us through the, dun, 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 the dun. incident. Because the reason I the reason I named this episode The Suffering of a Domestic, because it seems like that's the stem of stuff start heading down. Yeah. It 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 it, it precipitated events that, that grew like a cancer mm -hmm. uh, on the family. And March twenty eighth, twenty nineteen, we had a uh, verbal argument. And Children were there involved, um, and it resulted in a 911 call to the local PD. From someone who heard it? My, my wife called. Oh, she called. Uh, she dialed 911. And, and she knows exactly what that'll exactly. do to you. And, yep. like, I, I couldn't believe it was happening at the time, and I told her, I said, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know if you know what you did or you don't know, but it's like, I immediately now have to go wait outside. I don't know if we'll ever have a chance to really talk again. And uh, I have the 911 tapes as a result and the recordings, and, and I wait outside. And, and you know, like, when you've reached, if you responded, when you're going to somebody who's on the job, um, here, here's a, an academy story. Like, how many gun jobs does a, does a cop go on? Every call Every is a call. gun yep. job because you, you, have, you have a gun and you can be disarmed. Yep. But now you have a member of service, a law enforcement officer, and you know it attracts uh, a bigger response, a enhanced response. You know the consequences, what's going, you know the possible consequences going afterward where the average layperson will not know that you, you can be arrested, you could, you know, the, the yeah. domestic paperwork, vine paper, vine form, all that stuff is going to happen. Yeah. You know, because I can't tell you my wife has never called the cops on me because that's not the truth. Mm -hmm. When I was, after my shooting, she called a several, couple times. And I knew they were coming to pick me up. So what did I do? I waited out on the bed of my truck with a bunch of liquor and drank it. And as they're waiting for other responding officers, I'm like, hang on, I'll go with you in a minute. Let me, let me finish. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, ar the arrogance, because you know what's coming. Yeah. And, and you got a, a big brass response too. <laughs> you know, you got all the, the supervisors are going to come if it's a cop that was, was it in the town that you worked in? Oh, you were in Nutley and this was, it, your I, mom, but it they was, knew you were on the job. Yeah. You know, uh, cause she said it. Yeah. She said, so it. my husband's a cop and, 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 la, 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 and I, and I, oh. uh, yeah. Yeah. And I said, Oh, here we go. And, and I know like responding, and when you go to on-duty incidents, uh, I think it's it's respectful. Uh, if you know there's going to be a boss, there's going to be a cop, you behave. You you mind your manners. Listen, if you were having a drink, that's the worst thing. Like, I mean, you get you get some calls you go on, and there's guys on the job, and and they're not not behaving. I felt it was a duty. Listen, be calm, be respectful, be out there, 
Tell them where your service weapon is. Don't give anybody a reason to be uncomfortable. At one point, they said, uh, they, they asked for a boss, then they asked for another boss. So here comes the lieutenant, the next, next layer. And so they said the breast response. Absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. And this is, is where I, I feel there was a little fault procedurally. And I'm not, listen, I will never bash my own brothers in blue. Um, but they said, um, well, he said, it's a verbal. It's, it's, it's not a domestic. There's, there's no predicate offense. Ask her if she wants a TRO because mm -hmm. he's on the job. And if she says yes, we'll make it a domestic. Those are the words exactly. Wow. Wow. And that. Good job protecting your brother there. Not yeah. you, the other one. And, you know, it, it, some of us are our own worst enemies. Yep. Let's, let's be very clear. We're yep. our own worst enemies. However, because I, I, I ran into this a lot. You know how much domestic paperwork I've done on verbal <laughs> arguments? Like, and I would say, this isn't a domestic. It's a yeah. verbal argument. Exactly. Yeah. I said, if there, was a, if there was a police response every time I had an argument with my wife, there'd be a substation in my garage. Absolutely. Yeah. And then this, that was the turning point. That, that was the pivotal change in the life of the family, my life, and as it is today. And this is where the shield became the spear, the domestic uh, violence incident. Now, in your head, before you go any further, yeah. in your head, your wife just called the cops on you for something that you don't see. You never touched her, correct? You never touched her. There was correct. no physical anything. She calls the cops. Now, in your mind, especially, try to think back to that night mm -hmm. or day, whatever it was. Are you done with her? No. Yeah. No. Um, and, you know, as being on the job, we're critical, right? So you get the, we know it, being on the job. There's the Friday TRO, and here's the Monday makeup and the dismissal. Yeah. You get the career domestics, and they come in, and I'd, I'd say, like, why would you do that? How, how many TROs do you get on a Friday, and you're locking the guy up on Sunday because he violated a TRO just to go back and see, you know, because they wanted to make up again. Yeah. But, you yeah. Know, and they couldn't get it dismissed until a Monday. So here, here's, here was my theory with TROs, and see if this rings true with either of you. If I walked into that house yeah. and the woman said, I don't want a TRO, chances are she needs a TRO. It's the ones you walk into the first time and say, I want a TRO. Those are the ones who really don't need one. Yep. I mean, that, that's my theory. I don't think that's 100% correct, but that's my theory. I, I think it's a good categorization. I think it's yeah. a characterization, rather, uh, yeah. uh, of the ones that are really uh, muscling the system. Yeah. Because they know how damaging it could be to a cop's career. Yeah. All right. Like you said, is if the cop walks in and all of a sudden she says, I want a TRO Let's, without explaining what happened first, you know, because they know how damaging it could be. Now, did they lock you up that night or just tell you to leave the residence? They they didn't. Um, there was no arrest. There was no criminal charges. Um, when I found out the TRO was being issued, I was sitting on the couch and the, the, the my three girls were nearby. And uh, this is a poignant uh point in the story for me emotionally because it takes me back like I was there sitting right here I can see it clear as day um they said is there some place you can go I'm like why yeah exactly <laughs> you know first and then well she wants a TRO and I was tr I was being a gentleman with and they were with me you know otherwise from that decision they they they, they did a good job we were very respectful of each other and I said listen I said can I uh can I say goodbye and uh, I remember because I got the body cam footage and I can still hear my girls screaming, no, daddy, don't go. We love you, daddy, don't go. And I said, uh, it's okay, sweetie. I said, you know, mommy got us in a little bit of trouble, but I'll be back. They were screaming, crying. And uh, they almost had to tear them away from me because they were clutching me so hard. And I, and I went down to the PD, um, did a consent to search. Um, I had inherited my home from my father. My father was a research and development chemist for Hoffman LaRoche. Invented Valium. Really? <laughs> he, he was on the research team. So your father made a lot of people happy. <laughs> I, I, I actually, uh, I brought the book. He's published in the book, uh, that lead scientist. Uh, so if you take a Valium, thanks, Dad. Yeah. And he always told me, he's like, listen, I never saw a penny of that. <laughs> I'm sure he didn't. And, but diazepines, uh, benzodiazepines, benzos as they're called, uh, very instrumental in mental health. 
um, clonopin. People get clonopin. You know, I'm not saying you should be on it for life. Um, I know that. Yeah. But he, he someone went on it for too long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> someone know. used to like to drink on Kalanapin. Uh, alcohol and benzos is bad. Yeah, synergistic effect. Bad, but it's cheap. Yep. It's a cheap, cheap, you're, cheap you're cheap drunk. <laughs> cheap but, date. But it could kill you. My father told me that. He's like, listen, he goes, you know, they give Valium a bad name, but every time they find somebody that overdoses, it's um, they were doing lines of blow all night. They have a quart of vodka in them. They've been drinking all day long, but they're saying it's the Valium that killed yeah. them. Because they got the deepest pockets to sue. Yeah. My father would draw benzene rings as a child and show me what he created in a laboratory. He also created a drug called Versed. Versed, if you go to the dentist and, and you get put under sedation, Versed is the drug they give you. And they give it to combat uh, military so they have retroactive amnesia so they don't remember the trauma of the explosion. Wow. Wow. That's, that's pretty cool. That's so, pretty cool. But- it's a shame he didn't have a hand in that Viagra stuff because that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I heard. Yeah. Uh, he, he wanted to go into Viagra, but it was too hard. That's a good that. one. But I'm pumped. So where did you go? <laughs> so um, I left and I lived in a hotel for a month. Um, I, I, I had a close friend of mine who was my uh, academy mate. My best friend, my brother, just a very similar relationship to you and Mike, which is also another casualty in my divorce. Oh, yeah. You always lose people in the divorce. My best friend in the whole world. I called him my brother. We I godfather to each other's children. Um, so I called him. I told him what was going on. He, he also went through rehab. I took him, picked him up from rehab, you know, uh, and he's, he's state state trooper, oddly enough. So we came on in our jurisdiction. He left. I cried. I actually, a grown man cried when my, my brother was going to the state police and we weren't going to work together. So I go to the hotel and I'm living there waiting for the hearing. Uh, I'm having microwave dinners, yeah. not able to talk to my girls. Every single night from the day they were born, I was in the delivery room too. I, when they, they, they cut my wife open, C-sections. I'm looking at them. Oh, you're doing a wonderful job. I'm looking. There's your bladder. There's another piece of thing. Like me going to an autopsy. I was like, it, 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 it's a deer gutting over here. Yeah, it's no a, kidding. But I said, oh, you're doing beautifully, honey. It's so sweet. And I'm looking. Oh, my God, the carnage over here. I will say the hardest thing about a C-section, because I watched it, is looking at that placenta. And I'm going to gross everybody out here, but it looks like a veiny London broil. Yeah, I was almost going to say like a liver, almost a yeah, little bit. Oh, but God, yeah. it's bad. It's bad. I remember my girls coming out, my first daughter, They she sang. You know how most they have the shriek? My first girl, Grace, she came out, la, la, <laughs> singing. Like I remember angel. my boy coming out, and, and you'd notice their balls swell. <laughs> they do. Their yeah. boys, the balls swell, and I'm like, that ain't my kid. That ain't my goddamn baby. <laughs> pull, pull DNA, Doc. Kid yeah. Irish. Jesus, look at those things, man. He's, he's carrying some tennis balls in there. <laughs> my ex gave birth naturally to both of them, so I never actually had the C the C section stuff. So yeah, yeah it's actually, it's too. it's something else. But you know, the, the funny thing is, is after the baby comes out, you have to follow the baby. Mm -hmm. It's like my and and to, this was this was wrong. My wife was now persona non grata. It's. I just go, oh, hey, I'll see you later. Hey, they're going to have fun sewing you back up. Yeah. That's Here's hard. some ice. Yeah. <laughs> it's not an easy recovery. No, either. I know. It's a tough you know? one, yeah. It's yeah. tough. So you're, you're living in a hotel eating microwave dinners. Yeah. Can't see your kids, which has got to be the worst thing in the world. Um, now, you couldn't – were you put what we call in a rubber gun squad? Were you allowed to go back to work, desk duty or anything like that? Uh, administrative leave. Yeah. So that so this uh, duty weapon was, was, seized was seized and administrative leave. But at least on the bright side, I was being paid. Um, worked it out, went to the uh, TRO hearing, which is now TRO going for an FRO. I was expecting there was going to be a dismissal and now we can talk. We can move our way forward. Um, and she's like, nope, <laughs> I'm going for the hearing. So I had to have a full-blown trial. For the, for the FRO, for, for the, the final FRO. restraining order. Yeah, so now they're, she's going for an FRO, and, and she get on the stand, and there was these these tales of things of, of, of what she was trying to, to portray me as, and I said, this is just, this is fiction. You're like, what happened? This is pure fiction. Where was I when that happened? Yeah, you know? yeah. and, uh, you know, it was about as bad as you get. I mean, I was, I was demonized 
uh, but I prevailed. And the TRO was dismissed. And I said, listen, I, I, I tried to be so good about it. I said, she doesn't have to get right out of the house because now she's living in my, my father's house, mm. my, my family residence. I said, she doesn't have to leave right away. It's like, we'll work things out. I'll go back. Um, turns out, scooped up the children, left, went to my mother-in-law's home, uh, took a lot of belongings out of the house, and I went, I went back to, a, to an empty home. Um, and then just re she refused to provide the children. To, to see me, to talk to me, there's no TRO now. There's no impediment. So we had to do an order to show cause, which is an emergent hearing, um, to get in front of a judge to say, I want I gotta see my children. And um, and that's gotta be tough too, because if you contacted her, she just get another TRO against you. Oh yeah, yeah he called me and threatened me. I didn't even go back to get my personal yeah. belongings. You know how you can go back, you know, with an accompaniment with yeah. a, a law enforcement officer to keep keep the peace. I was like, I'm not even touching it. I'm not going there. I want this to go right. And prevailing on on a TRO hearing is is no small feat. Was it what county? Essex. 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 Really? See, I'm surprised they they even entertained this in Essex. Yeah. Years ago, Morris was the tough one, mm -hmm. and then Essex was a little bit easier because they saw so much. Yeah. I'm I'm very surprised about that. What year is this? This is 2019. Oh, okay, so no, okay, that makes perfect sense because mm -hmm. those those two counties have now flip flop from what I understand. Yep. Yeah, you got it right. Yeah. Uh, but Essex and Camden County still have the most numbers. I follow the stats now because of my position. Yeah. <laughs> now it's uh, April 26th. Um, as you know, I had said that there were firearms seized from the home. Uh, my father, being a chemist, of course, he's he's a hunter, right? Because chemists are hunter. <laughs> you know, what a great what a great man. Uh, he, did, he didn't make value. meth, did he? No. Take value. I saw shooting. that TV show. No. <laughs> but you know what he would make? He would make silver. He would crystallize silver and he would bring it home in a, in a little jar. And he goes, watch this. He goes on the string. He goes, in a week, we're going to have silver. And it was a little jar. I would sit there and sure shit. Yeah. We, at the end, we took it out and he would bring home, uh, you know, the chemicals that are in nightsticks. Mm -hmm. He would bring them home because he could make them in the lab. And we would make like homemade uh, nightsticks and, oh, and all cool. sorts oh, of things. That's crazy. He'd make wine. Dad was like Mr. Wizard. <laughs> and, and I brought that to the children. I, that's one thing I, I took from him. Um, you know, dry ice experiments, all that stuff with the girls. Loved it. Yeah. And I taught my oldest daughter archery. So we were doing archery. She took to it like a champ. But um, so now it's April 26th. I'm waiting for the children. I said, ah, you know what? We finally got them. She's going to bring the girls over. I'm going to see them. Uh, I got to get some mac and cheese for my girls. Let me go to let me go to the store. I get in the car, start it up. I put it in reverse. Three, four, five unmarked police cars come up on the lawn behind me in the driveway, marked Nutley PD. And, you know, being on the job, I said, Oh, I'm going to show my hands. So I'm yeah. sitting there in my own driveway. The neighbors are now seeing everything. Um, guy comes up, he goes, You know what we're here for? Well, I really, I don't. It's about the guns. It's like, You have all, you have all my father's guns. I don't have, a, I don't have a firearm to be had. Was it's about the guns. Uh, as it turns out, the the two of the firearms that my father had legally purchased at the time, back in the day, um, fell under the New Jersey assault weapons ban. And he also had magazines that were violative of the statute for high capacity magazines. So did every cop weapon. driving at one point. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Before they changed the law, they changed yeah. every on duty cop to a violator until yep. until the lawyers and the legislature fixed it. So. This will go to speak to the draconian and barbaric gun laws. Um, it didn't even matter if I had went to turn them in. I never knew that they turned into assault weapons. No notice, no nothing. Uh, to, I said, all right, well, this is going to be a summons and release. I like, couldn't, couldn't somebody have called, you know, my, my PBA lawyer and I could have came in and turned myself in. Arrested, handcuffed, back at a patrol car, brought in there, holding cell with other prisoners uh processed and i was like all right it's going to be on a summons they called the prosecutor's office they put it on a warrant mm. what what was the meaning behind all this venom i suspect um because i had uh a difference of opinion on some promotional matters where i was it was my contention my lieutenant promotion should have came sooner litigation was initiated against the township Oh, la 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 la. Okay. We'll skip right over that. 
So there's some underlying conditions. It all makes Mm -hmm. sense now. Yeah. So I believe, and listen, you know, these are, I don't want to go throwing things. It's an opinion. It's an opinion. Strictly an opinion. (laughs) Uh, My opinion is that they were using the prosecutor's office like human resources. 